All right, everybody, welcome to the finale of the High Yield Rapid Pharmacology Reviews. Almost at the end of the year, almost finished with all this new material. This one's a sort of a mishmash of, you know, things that they have to throw in, so now they throw in all of these topics now, but we'll try our best uh, to help you get through them. As always, take everything with a grain of salt or a mound of salt for going through the lectures and we're making sure we pick up what we believe are the high yield topics but you know this doesn't 100 percent substitute for uh, looking at your notes and making sure you study the material and then the last thing is don't um don't um ignore the date but uh, another survey is going to be going out on dr pullen relatively soon and we'd really appreciate it if you'd help us uh, help us out and uh, fill that out for us if you enjoyed the course and or the the reviews and you found them helpful like it'd be a really big help to us so we'll start with alternative medicines so first thing if first is um, you know there's you got to be careful when you're buying stuff especially alternative medicine type stuff not to sort of shy away and tell you that it's wrong or it's bad or it's unhealthy it's just that there's like there's kind of there's a market for it because you know it is sort of popular now and with that popularity comes people trying to make money off of it and so for example like gnc target walgreens and walmart found that four to five of the products did not contain any of the herbs on their labels so there's a lot and you know it's reputable companies with um you know actually sort of ripping you off and just saying oh you know here's some st john's wort but there's no st john's wort in it so you just have to be very careful and um you know Cheap fillers were found, like powdered rice, asparagus, and houseplants, you know. So just be careful when you're doing anything like this because, you know, there are some cases of people ripping you off. And sort of to take it a step further, this, you know, slide that you had in your presentation that the USP is sort of like verifying everything that's going on, like with that past, you know, information from that past article. It's not really true. The USP... You know, they're this governing body, but not the FDA. They're not, you know, making sure that every product and is what is, you know, expressed in their label. Their sort of primary purpose from what we were taught in pharmacy school was they're sort of like a governing body that makes sure that, you know, compounding practices and, and medications or, you know, things that are going to be sterile compounded are going to be uh, correctly done. And it's, it's not necessarily the FDA. So they're not going to, you know, if you, oh, something's USP verified, it doesn't mean that it's like 100% safe and is okay. And, you know, it, it don't think of the USP as the FDA. So when you see those commercials, USP approved, it's not. It's not the same thing as being verified by the FDA. It doesn't validate individual product quality or anything like that. So just be very careful because they're not, it's not as, uh, I guess, kosher as everybody thinks it is you got to make sure that everything is safe and effective and just be wary so some of the medications we're going to be going over with we sort of have just like a summary slide here summary slide and if i had to say like the highest this would sort of be like the thing to sort of memorize if you don't want to go through all the other stuff is just you know a few key facts about all of these things and the side effects and the uses that sort of bring them to fame. So for creatine, you know, creatine is used for bodybuilding, however, in excessive amounts or in patients with, you know, a predisposition can cause renal failure and water weight gain. Uh, DHEA, which is a physiologic, um, uh, physiologic end product in the pathway of making testosterone and estrogen can be used in and of itself, and it can be used for physical performance. However, you have some androgenic and estrogenic side effects that we you know, talked about in a previous lecture. Echinacea is an immune stimulant. Ginger can be used for nausea, but it can also cause bleeding. And that's one of the big things you'll notice is a lot of these can cause bleeding. Ginkgo, Bilboa can be used for dementia and Alzheimer's and you know uh, neuroprotective effects, but it can also cause bleeding. Uh, ginseng, another one which can be used for a miscellaneous number of things, which we'll get into, also causes bleeding. Glucosamine, and then chondroitin, which isn't included here, is used for osteoarthritis. Kava can be used for anxiety, but can lead to liver toxicity. Sal palmetto is used for benign prosthetic hyperplasia. Uh, St. John's wort is primarily used for depression, very high yield, one to know, and it can cause a whole host of drug interactions because it is an inducer. 
Valerian, Valerian think of as a benzo and can be used for insomnia. Ephedra is a stimulant, so it can be used for weight loss and other athletics, but can lead to stimulant-like effects such as strokes and heart attacks. And then garlic can be used for hypertension and cholesterol, but it can also cause bleeding. So just getting into the specifics of each one, creatine, so it facilitates the recycling of ATP. We all know what ATP is, used as we said earlier for athletic performance and bodybuilding. Side effect is weight gain, which is mostly water weight, and cause some myopathies and renal failure. So dihydroepiandosterone, it is a synthetic steroid hormone converted to andro androstenedione. Sorry, and I'm also kind of sick, so forgive me. It has estrogenic and androgenic properties. It is used to enhance physical performance, you know, sort of like a steroid, uh, banned from athletic competitions, lots of side effects. Just think of our estrogen and uh, androgenic side effects, acne, testicular atrophy if you're a male, behavioral changes specifically for the androgen properties, and then gynecomastia because of the estrogenic properties. Echinacea is an immune stimulant, flus, colds, and infection. I, looking at the data, I believe there's no reduction in incident or duration of flu or cold-like symptoms when people take this. Side effects, you know, oddly enough, can cause flu-like symptoms and then also some hepatitis. Ginger. Ginger is actually very useful for nausea in pregnancy and also for nausea from motion sickness. It is thought to be very similar to an antihistamine, and that's where it gets its uh, anti-nausea-like properties. However, it can increase bleeding time, and you don't want to give a patient ginger or have a patient who's taking ginger if they're already on other anticoagulants. And so this is where, you know, a classic example of somebody maybe, I don't know, an older person is developing a little vertigo, and they're also on warfarin for AFib, and they, a friend tells them ginger could be helpful for their vertigo or their motion sickness end. You know, you could have a potential disastrous consequence. Glucosamine, think osteoarthritis. Very simply, just put those two together. Uh, you can use for arthritis and reduce inflammation, and it also can increase dec increase the range of motion and reduce the discomfort of OA. Kava, it's an anxiolytic, sedative, and hypnotic, very similar to the effects of alcohol. Another way to sort of link this to alcohol is it can have some very... Uh, liver toxic effects that leads to death and uh, liver transplants, if uh, severe. Ginkgo balboa is used for dementia. It's thought to vasodilate and improve uh, uh, brain blood flow and anti have some antioxidant properties. However, it is a very high rate of spontaneous bleeding in the brain. So, you know, uh, another reason to, you know, maybe think twice before giving or advising your patient to go use some ginkgo. Ginseng. So this was one of mis uh, this was a miscellaneous one that has many different effects, physically, mentally, and sexually invigorating. Whatever, take that as it be. Uh, Anti-stress like effects, immune system modulation, anti-hypertensive, and it can also inhibit platelet aggregation for a more, you know, mechanistic like you know we know that it can do this, and it can also improve glucose homeostasis. There's something called ginseng abuse syndrome, where if you take more than three grams a day. You can get some CNX, CNS excitation, arousal, and hypertension, nervousness, and sequences. Sol palmetto is for our benign prosthetic hyperplasia. Side effects include headache, GI upset, hypertension, and decreased libido, which is relatively uncommon. Hitting the final stretch, we have a few more. These, I would think, are probably more the high-yield ones, these last four. So St. John's wort. It is pretty much an SSRI, but the efficacy is sort of, people find it that it helps, but it, when I say efficacy is undermined, think that this drug hasn't been put through the vigorous studies that, you know, prescription drugs have. So people say that this does work anecdotally in some small studies. However, it doesn't have the big, big, big clinical trials that the prescription drugs do. And that's where, you know, we sort of take all of this with a grain of salt. So it could be useful and it could be helpful for patients, but, it, you know, we just don't have the data to prove it. So that's why sort of the answer when anybody comes in and says, I want to start taking this, you know, complementary or alternative medicine, it's like, okay, you know, I support whatever you would like to do to improve your health. And I think it could be helpful for you. However, you know, bring in the agent. I don't know what it is or what it isn't. I don't know 
you know, I need to educate myself so that I can better help you out and all of those things. Uh, lots of drug interaction for this one and you will get tested on this. It induces CYP3A4 so it can decrease the metabolism of our transplant drug cyclosporin, indinavir, phenobarb, tamoxifen, and oral contraceptives. So you, I guarantee you, you will get tested on that. On this exam, it are, are you world questions and you could possibly have this on your step. Big, big, big high yield drug. Circle St. John's work. No, it's a drug inducer. Valerian, Valerian, think of a benzo. It is lots of benzodiazepine-like activities causing sedation or insomnia and a small hypnotic effect. It, obviously, if it is a sedative, it can cause some drowsiness. It is very, very smelly and it can cause some headaches. Ephedra, so it causes, it contains ephedrine and pseudoephedrine, so it contains, you know, sympathomimetic drugs, sympathomimetic, you know, properties, like alpha-1 and alpha-2, so therefore it is considered a stimulant, and so it can be used for weight loss and athletic enhancement. However, there's an increased risk of stroke, heart attack, death, and it has been banned um, from weight loss supplements that can be obtained over the counter. Lastly, garlic, garlic, same thing we use in all of our Italian dishes. It has antihypertensive, anti-cholesterol-like properties. It uh, can be used in high doses for hypertension, but it inhibits platelet aggregation. Therefore, there's, you know, bleeding-like effects similar to the bruising that you get from aspirin from this drug. It can also upset the stomach, and patients can have allergic reactions to garlic. So I believe this is our last slide. Yes. So, you know, that first slide I think would be the best thing for you guys to know just sort of understanding what most of the things are used for. We kept it very simple with the complementary and alternative medications. Uh, know that first slide inside and out. And the second thing I would, I would focus on this because this specific, these four drugs, St. John's wort, valerian, ephedra, and garlic are probably the most high yield of all of the alternative medications.